All right. Uh, I, I absolutely tremendous job by our crowd today. You know, you talk about what odds and that experience can be like. Um, and it was it was phenomenal. It was beyond phenomenal. It's what I love about this place so much. We have passionate fans, more passionate fans than anybody else in the nation. Um, we were prepared for a battle. It didn't end up being a battle. But I've also been on the other, the other end of this before, too. And I think that team's heading in the right direction. I think Coach is doing a phenomenal job. Obviously, he's brought great enthusiasm and uh, you know response from his players. And I know that they'll bounce back from this uh, this game moving forward. On the same note, you know, I get a little passionate at times, right? I get a little excited about what I want to accomplish for our, for our team. And I just want to say, you know, I need to humble myself a little bit. This is one game, right? And I'm not satisfied. So I just told our players, we're about to go play great quarterbacks. We're about to go play great teams moving forward. And it's about how good we can become, right? It's not really about who we play. And it's about Oregon versus Oregon every week. I felt like this was a complete game, offense, defense, and special teams. You know, didn't create a takeaway, um, on defense, I don't believe, but um, had some big plays in all three phases. We're dominant in all three phases. I thought you could watch our team and say, well, they have an identity in all three phases. So um, preparing for the next one, ready to go back to work. For Stanford, I know that they'll be ready. This will be a road game. We didn't play as well on the road earlier this year. It's time for us to show what we can do on the road moving forward so we can open it up with questions. All right, Zach. Your pregame speech became pretty popular after it got aired on the telecast. How long have you been sitting on that one? And in general, how do you think your players did handling the outside noise and the distractions? Yeah, I thought they handled it well. I thought they, they handled the focus uh, well. We do a pregame speech every week. I guess there was a camera in there this time, right? So it um, doesn't really change our approach. Um, you know, And we'll always have a message for our team. Sometimes it's to get them fired up. Sometimes we don't necessarily need the uh, brimstone, right? But, um, yeah, our guys, the, there is no speech that wins games. Players win games, right? Our players went out there and they won the game, right? Our players went out there and executed. And our players went out there and, and decided to make a decision to have poised, right? Be focused, right? Play with their pads uh, and not with anything else. And uh, that's what I'm proud of, right? Making that decision. It's an us decision, right? It's not a me decision. Second row left, Eric. Talk a lot about playing up to a certain standard, the defense in particular. You said complete game, but how close are they to living up to the standard today? And, and I guess what stands out that makes it that close? Well, it's one standard. You know, it, 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 excuse me, it's one game, right? It's one game. It's about being consistent in your approach, right? So uh, I'm really pleased with them. I thought they were dialed in. Uh, I thought they did a good job of eliminating explosive plays. You know, that's a team that's created a lot of explosive plays. I felt they had a good feel. You know, I thought our coaching staff did a phenomenal job. Um, you know, disappointed with the score there at the end, uh, but certainly something that we can build off of. Now it's about can you do that consistently? Can you be consistent in your approach? And I think we learned a little bit about ourselves that, you know, patience, there's value in patience, right? We were able to apply pressure. We were able to be disruptive to the quarterback, but it wasn't like we were out there blitzing seven every down, right? And knowing when, when, when to pitch, right? Having some patience, having some consistency, you know, recognizing, um, you know, formations and having a feel for the game. I thought our, our, uh, Tosh did a phenomenal job. I thought our uh, coaches did a phenomenal job, and our players did a phenomenal job of adjusting. So have to carry that over to each week. Front left, James. Damn, yeah, when the message was substance and not flash, what does it feel like that you won the way that you did and with so much attention that's been generated by them and you having to answer a lot of things about them, what does it mean to you personally as a coach and for your program to be the first to hand them a loss? Yeah, I'm not hung up on that. Um, when If you're really about substance, what you're really hung up on is what's next, right? And what's next for our players. Um, I'm glad that we got to put Oregon in the light that Oregon deserves to be in. Um, but it's really not about anything else other than our team, right, and getting our team ready to go play. And now we got to go get ready for the next one, right? We, do, we don't need to be the team that's reading the newspaper articles, right? We don't need to be the team that's following Twitter because we didn't follow it this week. So we're not going to. We're certainly not going to look at it next week, right? We have to uh, again humble ourselves, including myself, including our staff, and focus on what's next. Pat Wright, coach. Six different players added up to the seven sack total. Jordan Birch leaving or leading the way. What did you see from the pass rush unit today, and how were they able to affect Shadour so well? <laughs> well, they're you know they haven't been a team really that's that's ran the ball. And so I, th I think we knew that there were going to be pass rush opportunities. And like I said, it really speaks to the patience of when we do execute a game, let's, you know, go attack. Let's go be on the move. Uh, and I thought our guys did a good job of that. When they don't have great balance, it allows you to be more disruptive in the pass rush game. It allows you to build your games, you know, on the front more so for passing game than run game. Right. And, um, you know, I thought our guys did a good job of executing that. Middle left, we're all no doubt a lot of eyeballs on this one. What impression do you hope, think, that Bo might have made on, on everybody who was watching? We got the best quarterback in the nation, 
right? I, I know that. I can see that. It's like, again, you see all the plays that he throws and all the plays he makes with his feet, but you guys don't see all the checks that he makes. You don't see what he does for this team. You don't see his leadership. And he sent a, a text this morning to me that was like impactful for me. That guy shapes me, right? That guy makes me a better person. And we got that guy on our team, so we're so blessed to have him. All the way back, Matt. I feel like your team's being a little disrespected or not talked enough about just how good you guys are coming into this week? I don't care how much anybody talks about us, but if we can ever find fuel for the fire, we'll certainly use it. Back right roll. All offseason, the defense talked about wanting to, you know, set the tone and go out there and be feared as a whole. What do you feel like that statement was made, or what do you feel like the statement that they made today in their performance? Yeah, one game, right? And again, for me, it's about consistent approach. All right, can you do that on the road now? Right? Can you remove self-inflicted wounds? You know, I think it creates belief when you have a game like that. But again, I know what we're about to play. I mean, we're going to have some of the best offenses in this conference uh, as we move forward. You know, and you certainly can't be satisfied with that result. Back left, Ashley. Blue in the blue. Can you talk a little bit about what are some of the new guys on defense have done for you, like Jordan Birch, Evan Williams, and Kyrie Jackson? Yeah, the, you know, I think you look at our track record. When we bring a guy in, they normally can help us, right? And all those guys have enhanced us, you know, just as much as they are good players on the field, they're good people. They fit our culture. They work tremendously hard. Um, they don't really care necessarily what their rep count is, but when they get an opportunity, they take advantage of it. And I think all those guys have been tremendous for us and um, will continue to be. All right, Zach. More specifically on Kyrie Jackson, he was a he's strung together a couple of really nice games here. He was someone earlier in the season that you highlighted as making a few panic mistakes in coverage. How do you think you've seen him grow over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, he he has grown, and Kyrie has the ability to be an elite corner, right? Not just here, but at the uh, next level. But what I'm glad of is I can coach Kyrie. I can tell him, hey, this is what you got to improve, and he owns it and he accepts it. There are definitely opportunities for growth for him moving forward, and the more he shapes his game and continues to grow, he can be really special. Back middle, Aaron. You mentioned earlier that you think that this could be one of the top offenses in the nation. Just after today, seeing how the running backs did, how Troy did, you know, in the first half especially, um, and just the fact that you're able to put Ty in at the end um, because that's, you know, what the offense – uh, kind of earned uh, was a chance for him to get a couple reps. Just how versatile do you think this offense is, and where do you kind of want to see him go from here? Well, I just think they took, they took great steps today. I think our offensive coaches did an uh, awesome job preparing for this one, having great answers um, for out there in the field. You don't always know what you're going to get from a team, um, but they were they were prepared and made some great adjustments on things that we thought had maybe hurt us in earlier weeks. Um, we worked on some things that we wanted to go to the doctor on and get better at, and I thought those showed up in the game. So, again, it's about consistent growth. It's about the next step, but they did a good job today. Second row left, Eric. Why was that the right time for the fake punt, and why was Casey the right player to carry the ball there? Because we've probably ran that thing 47 times in practice, right, and the right times when they don't think it's coming, right? And we had some momentum. I have tremendous belief in our defense that time. They've been operating at a really high level. Right, but I'm not really interested in running fake punts when everybody thinks we're going to run a fake punt. Right, you kind of want to hit them when they don't su suspect it. Front left, James. <coughs> Troy's now up to three 100-yard games this season. We saw it obviously last year. What has he done to take this to the next level to where he can be nearly a 100-yard receiver every week? Yeah, it, what he can continue to do is not care about that. Right, I didn't know that. You know, I know Troy's playing well, but I didn't know he had three hundred, you know, three hundred yards receiving. But my expectation for Troy is that he always can. If you ever want to decide to single cover him, right, he's a guy that can absolutely take advantage of. It. He's just done a good job with yards after catch. You know, I challenge him to continue to protect the ball, keep uh, keep playing with great emotion, but within his teammates. Uh, Troy is special, man. He's a really phenomenal kid. He's hungry. I've seen big strides from him and his preparation, his desire to be elite, um, but certainly not done yet. All the way back, left, Matt. Running backs performed pretty well, ran over some guys, broke a lot of tackles. Just what do you think of those guys' performance? And just how much of a momentum builder is it to see a guy like Bucky break out of so many tackles on some long runs? That dude's tough, man. That group is tough. Their coach is tough, right? And I think that shows up in the way they play. And a, a very uh, selfless group, right, that I'm really, really proud of. On the right, Zach. Penalties, once again, were a little bit of an issue today. You said last week that you're not going to continue to coach something in a certain way if you know it's not working. How are you going to go back to the drawing board and kind of fix that this week? It's a little bit about what the penalties were. There were a couple um, that I need to go back and watch the film on first before I have, you know, a um, 
a fair decision on, right? So I have to evaluate those first and make sure. I know that our players were really conscientious about it, and some of them still showed up. So we're going to keep coaching it. Um, doesn't mean we'll continue to coach it the same way, but we'll, we'll get uh, continue to address it. You know, I don't know if the play clock had ran out. It didn't look like it did on the field to me on the delay game there at the end. Maybe it had. Um, and if so, that's my mistake. Um, there's a couple other ones that I wasn't sure about, but we'll, we'll evaluate it and make sure that we continue to get better there. Back left, Ashley. Right here in the blue again. Oh, was 22 of 24 in the first half and accounted for four touchdowns. Do you think he's performing at a higher level right now than he was last year? Or where do you think he is maybe compared to last year and how well he performed last year? Yeah, I'm not a big comparison guy. Um, but ultimately, I think Bo is operating extremely efficient, right? I mean, um, you know, Will and him are such on the same page. We're sitting in some huddles, and Bo called some of those touchdown plays, right? He's sitting here saying, what do you guys think about this? And we're like, great call. Let's do that. Um, it's I, I'm really, really comfortable with our quarterback, and I know he won't ever let the moment get too big for him, but he's playing at a high level right now. Front left, James. Any initial word on Noah Whittington? It looked like a left left leg. Foot. Yeah, I don't normally talk about injuries, and I think there's still more to be decided here, but I think Noah's going to be down for a little bit, right? So I need everybody to say prayers for him. He's he's uh, healthy, he's okay, right? But he's probably going to be down for a little bit, so I need everybody to have Noah in your, in your prayers, and uh, that is a tough kid, man. A tough kid that we're really proud of and fortunate to have, and there are bright days ahead for Noah. I just don't know that we'll have him here in the next few weeks. Same role on the left, Eric. For both sides of the ball, how you dominated the line of scrimmage, what that says about this team and, and maybe any statements that were made? I just think it says if you want to have a winning team, a successful team, it starts up front, right? Every game starts up front, and it started up there for us today. Are we up for you, Coach? All right, have a good one. Congrats on the win. Go Ducks. Go Ducks.